Welcome back, fellow travelers, to Recorder on the Wall. I'm Jeremy. I'm Pete. And I'm Katie. And, and no, we should... We, we well, are no con- Drew tonight. Huh? I said no Drew tonight, unfortunately. He had to back out last minute. Oh. He he has taken his turn to go on the nature walk. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> one of these days, one of us will find Mr. Squirrel. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, we'll find him. It may take us this entire series, but we will find him. <laughs> we I will do. find him! <laughs> Book three of Rogue Crew. We finally found Mr. Squirrel! <laughs> <laughs> um, and we haven't heard from Wilder. We, if he comes on, great. Uh, otherwise, we, we're going to go ahead and go on. Yeah, we led the final book of Lord Brogtree. Yay! Yay! And we and since there's no B plot, we just it's pretty much the confrontation here. Yep. Eh, kind of a B plot with the Bark Crew, but let's get to them. So the book, third book, literally opens with the surviving Salamandrastron hares, the skipper of sea otters, and others, basically doing hit and run tactics on Tron's army. Yep. It's pretty smart strategy, although it's not very nice. Yeah. No, I mean, they're not killing them too hard. Well. Mm-hmm. Well, they're mainly just is- taking their... Yeah. Fo- well, they're kind of slowly killing them, I guess, because, you know, they're stealing all their food. Right. I think I would rather, like, be killed suddenly in battle than to starve slowly to death, but that's just me. Yeah, and it's definitely having a morale effect on uh, Tron's army, we see. Tron takes it well, but... He's definitely got a few deserters, and he's got some major problems. Even if the officers are still eating, the regular horde is not, and they've taken notice. Yeah, so. and in all honesty, considering his cook at one point says, well, I'm mixing some moldy flour with seaweed and dandelion roots. It's like, mm, I don't delicious. know. Delicious. <laughs> yeah, that, that's like the anti-food <laughs> porn for this book. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, it, it, it's going over well. Although Tron still, most of the day, he spends kind of storming around the mountain and eventually finding some wine and getting stone-cold drunk. Great, so our heroes get stoned and the villain gets plastered. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he do- unfortunately, Tron doesn't find a stone paw stash, so... <laughs> <laughs> that would have just made him even more hungry. <laughs> he hid the stash very well with all the rest of the badger treasure. He does, because we have, we uh, we do see we do see uh, Brock Tree getting into it, finding his father's inner chambers. So, and we'll get to that in time. But while the Bark Crew are slowly depleting the vermin hordes of their need, much needed food, because you know, Ungat didn't think to bring food, more food with him. Yeah, power bars. Uh, Come on now. Yeah. <laughs> Brock Tree and his group are slowly making their way towards the mountain. And they've got both Jekka's tribe and Bucko's court with them now. And the hedgehogs. And the shrews. Yep. It's not nearly in the same numbers as uh, Tron is, but it's a fierce little group, as we're going to find out. Also, unlike Tron's tribe, they're not half-starved and literally falling over. Yeah, that's point out several points that the general rank and file are literally collapsing from hunger at points. Yes. So. Which does make you wonder why some of them don't actually... De- uh, well, we'll find out later one group does, but why most don't desert. I mean, do they really fit? Like, there's so many of them, it's like, well, they can't stop all of us from deserting. Yeah, I, th- I would think fear of a leader only goes so far. Yeah, and you can yeah you can only make someone fear you so much before they say no no I'm angry with you now. Yeah. Yes, I'm literally starving to death. I'm going to go find food now. Goodbye. Yes. And if you object, I have a sharp thing to for, to discuss it with you, with you. Well, as we find out later, even though sharp things aren't very reliable, since. What is it? Juka like picks up a spear, removes a rusted nail, and the top falls off. Mm. <laughs> like yeah. even their uh, weapons are wasting away. Uh, admittedly, even Tron's own weapons. Not, not the highest quality. 
We'll get to that. Yes. So, Tron eventually has enough of his forces getting uh, plundered, and they're forced to march back in the water, so they lose their blue coloring. And he spent a lot of money on that blue dye. <laughs> Branding okay, is important. Didn't it say, though, that, like, no matter what they went through, I can't find the exact quote, but, like, yeah. it will never but wash I'm, off? Yeah, when um, Rip, Rip Fang and Dumai join up, he says, like, let it rest for, like, a certain amount of days, and then it will be permanent. Nope. Comes right off with salt water. Apparently. I guess excessive wading in salt water? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe they've got uh, bleach in that salt water. Maybe this is Jake's uh, subtle commentary that vermin don't really bathe much, so they didn't have to worry about it being washed off. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I like that one. <laughs> so, Well, speaking of Red Fang and Dume, he says, okay, I guess I'll take another chance on you. He gives them control over a about 150, we're told, vermin force to follow a scouting party, so when the bar crew would never barely attack them, they're going to kill all the bar crew together. And this almost works. Yep. Almost. We literally see Stiffener and Bragala fight back to back when there's only about ten of them left. So. And then... Yeah, this... <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, but I mean, luckily uh, some help comes to their aid. And we no, get... it's not Gandalf with uh, <laughs> the, ro- the what do you call them? Shoot, I don't. I'm a terrible know. nerd. Um, Rohan uh, or whatever. Well, we get Bucko <laughs> and the boxers. <laughs> yes, and I do. I do appreciate the fact that Stiffener is not ashamed that his grandsons came to help him. He's just like, oh, cool, it's you guys. Hey, how you doing? Like, yep. Oh, we're going to die with you, Grandpa. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Stiffner does seem to be the most, like, level-headed out of all the hairs. Yeah, because let's talk about Fleet's gut. Oh, Do boy. we have oh, to? Oh, my God. <laughs> no, this guy is... Ugh. I mean, yeah, even among the good guys, there's fun characters. There's annoying characters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and there's then there's the occasional character you just want to reach into the book and throttle. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and this is one of them. And I was going to say, and then there's Fleet Scott, who's worse than all of them put together. Yes, he is my maybe second least favorite hair. There's one more in Triss who I just do not like at all. But we'll get to him. We, we get to him. <laughs> yeah, we have seen this entire book that. He's a well-respected officer in the long in what the Proto Long Patrol, and he's following orders to go get help. Sure, okay. great. So but obviously, he insults he's dependable. Everyone. Yeah. yeah, he he acts immature. He's whiny. He continuously insults Juka's tribe, despite the fact that they're helping him. Yes, he's a drama queen. Yeah. <laughs> also, I've noticed. He and Ruro were kind of like buddies for a little bit. All of a sudden, they're not in one scene together for the rest of the book. I have a feeling she was like, all right, I've had enough of you. You're annoying. Yeah, no. probably. Ruro goes, uh, basically just stays back and becomes the white mage for the group. <laughs> <laughs> so. <clears throat> yeah, and also... So he berates Juka's tribe for stealing weapons from, you know, the rats that they've defeated, most of them killed. Uh, however, Stiffner and Brog have been doing that for that for what it sounds like about half a season. So, yes. yeah, hypocritical you don't, much? I, I mean, if I mean, I'm no I'm no soldier, I'm no military expert, but in this kind of conflict, you take every resource you can get. Yeah. They're not will- the hares may not be willing to kill an absolute cold blood, but they're not stupid either. If the bad guys have weapons, yes, they're going to use them. Fleet Scott, on the other hand, still thinks Juka's just a scavenger. When she's literally sworn to go to her death if necessary yeah. to finish this fight. Not to mention the fact that like her and her tribe, they don't have a big, nice, warm mountain to go home to. They have to scavenge and live off the land. 
he's got some, what would you call it, hair privilege going on. <laughs> <laughs> Very nicely done. Uh. So, yeah, but let's we're going to see what happens to him. So, long story short, Brock Tree and the group save the remaining Salamander on Hairs, Skipper and the Otters, and they figure out, hmm, that's a nice mountain over there. Let's take it. <laughs> and uh, I know, Jeremy, you want to bring up when Brock Tree starts talking to the surviving Salamander Strong Hairs about his dad. Yeah, there's a scene where he talks to Bramwell, who's like the, the elder one, who he and Stone Paul were the ones that remember the poem. Um, yeah, this scene totally didn't make me cry. I totally wasn't shedding tears. I swear, it's just, I have bad allergies, damn it. Oh, no, I was cutting onions. Yeah, no. <laughs> Actually, the Santa Ana winds are blowing over here, so I actually do have bad allergies from that. <laughs> but yeah, this scene where uh, Brock Tree talks to him and he tell and Bramwell tells him like how Stonepaw essentially went out like a total, you know, like the like a big hero and made sure all the hairs could live and took Lord knows how many rats with him. Yeah, this part. Yeah, this this got yeah. to me. But we also find out from Brock Tree directly that still in this in this Badger Father tradition, yeah, he hasn't seen him in a long time. <laughs> yeah, so we find out where where Brock Tree got, got it from. <laughs> I could just imagine. You know what? I would have loved an interbook scene between this and Mossflower, where Boar shows up at Salamanistron and Brock Tree's like, "Oh, Boar, so so good to see you again. Um, what are you doing here?" <laughs> My mountain. You can retire now, Dad. <laughs> Actually, it would have been funny if Boar's like, well, my daughter got married, and, well, that was the end of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But back to plot at hand. So Brock Tree comes up with this actually kind of a smart idea. He's going to trick Tron out of the mountain using a lot of guile instead of direct force and take it from him. That really confused me when I first read it. I had to yeah. read it a couple. I was like, okay, wait, what's going on? Backtrack. <laughs> yeah, it's like, who went where? Why is Juka shooting a fire arrow out of the window? I mean, okay. Yeah, I could obviously not be a military strategist because I'm just like, huh? What? <laughs> <laughs> what I gathered here is that the fire to the north of the mountain drew a lot of the horde out. And away, and not all of them came back, as mm -hmm. we find out, because Fraggle Rock didn't. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in the first officer desertion we've probably seen in the podcast so far, Fagoral, Fagoral? Fraggle Rock. Whatever. Fraggle Rock. <laughs> he doesn't come back. She. I mean, he had all those, she. He had all those hours, oh, she, excuse me. <laughs> uh, she. She had all those hours stored up with Vermin HR, and you know what? This is <laughs> takes some take some well deserved vacation. HR was yep. like, "Look, you can either desert or get thrown out the window. Which do which <laughs> you choose?" I choose option A, please. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but we still have Kangaroo. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> now, I can say his name, but okay, we'll go. With that. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, so yeah, most of the horde goes out in the fire, and like I said, don't come back. And some go out on another distraction out the south side. And while they stick around, Tron follows them. And while this is going on, Brock Tree sneak and his group sneak in through this same secret entrance we discussed last time up through the mountain. And then they kind of sit there and laugh and throw a feast at Tron for <laughs> walking away from this fortress of power. Oh, uh, there's some Whoops. things in between that I'm happening. Not, sorry. Where they're making their way through the caverns, and during this, yeah. Juka, Juka has been risking her life by pretending to be one of the blue vermin and makes her way through Salamandastron on her own and helps give a signal so that our heroes can launch their attack. 
And right before she leaves, of course, Fleet Scud insults her, because of course he does. And so while they're trying to find while our heroes are finding their way around the uh caverns, Fleet Scud's like, I know where to go, and he just runs off like an idiot. <laughs> yes. Oh And he, unfortunately, these are pretty much the only two major hero deaths we get. Uh here, but yeah, they go down fighting. Yeah, with, they, with with each other. Not not they're not fighting each other. Excuse me. Alongside each other. Yeah. Considering yeah. how much shade they were throwing at each other, that speaks to the fact that they were willing to die next to each other. Yeah. And Please cut is still a terrible person. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was gonna say yeah, I was significantly sadder about one of the deaths than I was about the other one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, in my in, our, in the notes, I just wrote, okay, so he dies a noble death. Still don't like him. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I do like, that it's essentially, they even, they don't glorify this moment, like, with some of the fights. It's just the quick, we have to kill all these vermin as quickly as possible, just, you know, Brock Tree running in and murdering everything in his path, and Sail Ears kind of keeping Dot away from it, like, okay, you're a kid, you shouldn't be looking at this. Yeah. Even though she becomes a general at the end of the book. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I was a little... Because aren't the twins about the same age as she is? Yeah. Yeah. And it, it, it's pretty implied they're both... Li- they both are interested. So. Yep. Yeah, I just... that I don't... It kind of rubbed me the wrong way a little bit, but I don't know if it's specifically because she was like, we shouldn't have brought a young girl to this place. I'm like, wait, wait a second. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think part of it might be that Bob Weave and Southpaw might have more experience in actual combat than she yeah, does. I can see that. Yeah. So that also might be a reason. Because in all honesty, before the, the you know this book, she lived a relatively sheltered life. She did, and I mean there were obviously females there. Like I think it was Sailors who said that, and she was a female. So I mean it wasn't yep. like there wasn't any females. Yep. Yeah. And so they do retake the mountain, and I, I like the moment where, you know, they finally get in and they find Brock Tree just standing there, like, just breathing heavily with the red eyes and everything, like, <sighs> Welcome to Salamandistron! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, while he, Brock Tree tells, the, tells his, his people, his groups, like, okay, go and see what's left of the larders and what we brought. And I want you to deliberately eat in front of the vermin to piss <laughs> and throw to, crusts and things at to them. Yeah, to demoralize them. Yeah, <laughs> it I like, does demoralize them, but they're well, also literally fighting over crusts. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rip Fang's like, don't tell them to stop. They're throwing food out of there. <laughs> this reminds me of every time when I my friend has a toy poodle, and I would watch her sometimes. And I also have my seeing eye dog. So every time I'm cooking in the kitchen. There would be these two little dogs just waiting for me to drop something because I'm a kind of a messy oh. cook. So, like, every time I drop something, like, the two dogs just run and be like, no, I get to it first. <laughs> I was, um, I was over the weekend, I was helping watch my niece, and she was literally feeding, uh, her dog off. She's only about one. Uh-huh. And she would, we put chicken and banana in front of her, just chopped up fine, and she would literally put her hand over the side of the high chair and drop it to the dog. He was all too happy to, to oh, yeah. indulge himself. <laughs> That's why dogs like generally like kids. They're like, hey, look, they give me food, and they usually have food on their hands, so my dog loves to lick my niece and nephew's hands because there's always some kind of food on them, it seems like. Um, my, um, fa- uh, some of my family in New Jersey, they had a poodle, and he eventually got to the point where they would just say chicken, and he would, like, dart for the kitchen. <laughs> That's great. Uh, Tangent. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, while this feast is going on, Brock Tree goes up to his father's chambers and finds a secret chamber that only he can open because he's a freaking badger. With so. incense. Yeah. <laughs> it's the stash. <laughs> 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 and he does indulge, but he, uh, before he does, he does look around the carved history of the mountain, and we see some other badger lords that have come ahead of, excuse me, badger lords and badger ladies. 
yep. who have come ahead of him. We have a couple of them by name. Earth Wait. on the Gripper. Spear hmm. Lady Gorse. I want a story about her, please. Because <laughs> she's the only one that I'm sure is a female. Like, there's not enough badger ladies. I want, I want a story about her. <laughs> Blue Stripe the Wild. That's also kind uh, of a great name. And then I, I'm going to slaughter this, I'm sure. Said Ruler the Jest. Said a Ruler Something. the Jest? Uh, like I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, they've mentioned... Need, yeah. I think they're also mentioned in um, Moss Flower by Boar. We'll find out when Are we they? get there. Yeah, I, I, they might these be. names, yeah, these names do look familiar. Yeah. We also get uh, he does go on the drug trip and he starts seeing past, present, and future like it's the freaking force. I see Martin. <laughs> yeah, Le- is it Martin? Is or is it Luke? <laughs> uh, or even Martin the Elder? Uh, or is it Matthias or Madame Mayo? I always, <laughs> I always I always thought it was like Martin the the founding father of Redwall, but yeah, that, yeah, it, it's it's more it than likely it's going to be it's freaking Martin. We all know that, but uh, <laughs> you know, Madame Mayo is on the side like I see how it goes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then and his Luke's son Martin is like, like, no, it was me. <laughs> <laughs> Madame was like, you were only in one book, and Martin's like, so are you. At least I was an adult in mine. <laughs> uh, and Martin the Elder is basically just mentioned, I think, if I recall yes. correctly. Yeah. So. But well, I'm sure we'll get to him in time. So yeah. This might be the... Oh, and... I was going to say, this might be the only book where Martin is never mentioned by name. I think it no, is. The, Maybe. Because he's uh, not born. Yet. This is true. Yes. Uh, yeah. It, it, we discussed last time, at best, Luke is a kid, if he's even alive yet. So. Also, Broctree has a song for his sword, because it wouldn't be a Red Bull book with plenty of songs. <sighs> Yay, songs! I'm, like, the only one who likes songs. <laughs> I don't mind them, but... At, thir- at book thirteen in publishing order, he'd he Jake's had started to use them a lot. Yeah, I mean, a couple of the songs in this book are like a whole page long. I, I don't mind them in cases where it's just like a fun moment, like when they're you know going down the river and singing, like that's fine. Or when the hares do the marching song to show their defiance to Trun at the beginning of the book, I like that. Yeah, that's him. That's critical. Yeah, because I kept thinking of Dottie's song in the beginning of book three. Here is I kept for one reason or another I kept thinking of the Gilligan's Island theme, and I'm well, like, nope, stop it, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> well, she does go on a fateful trip. Yeah, um, and I'm I'm still wondering if I'm going to have to bring the rewrite Gilligan's Island theme for when we cover Bellmaker, but. <laughs> But that's a song for another day. But yeah, there's a few in he- there's a few in here. So after Broctory also re- he discusses with everyone else when he co- finally comes down off the trip that <laughs> uh as, yeah they they have a better tactical situation but they are still seriously outnumbered and while they have more food they don't have a lot of food. Yeah, and they can't exactly leave the mountain to go get more. Nope. And uh, basically, if they try and wait this out, Tron's going to invade anyway, and he's going to win with hot, with better numbers. So, they have to have a come up with a better plan. And in true Badger tradition, Broctree's like, okay, I'll do a one-on-one. Yeah. I face you one on one. I yeah. beat you with sword. Rawr! And the others are like, "That sounds like a great uh, plan, or, but let's try and think of something that won't get everybody killed." Yes. Nope. Don't only doing it. <laughs> and he's like, "I beat Trun." Okay, we'll just make a plan without you then. I do like, and I could be remembering this wrong, but doesn't Dottie break up the big argument they all get into and kind of takes command a little bit? Yep. Yeah. yeah. It's basically her plan, like, okay, he's going to do his dual thing. Okay, let's, what's our plan to get him out of it? Yeah. (laughs) 
let's make sure Trun doesn't literally stab him in the back. Yes. Or, you know, devise another plan involving a rat with an arrow, but... Yep. Hmm. I, I do like how they show both armies, you know, dealing with the situation where with Trun, you have his horde basically plotting behind his back, like, okay, let's figure out how to save ourselves and get out of here because it sounds like Trun's not sure he's going to win. Whereas Brocktree's allies are, let's make sure we watch his back so we can win the day and avoid further bloodshed. Yeah. And Trun's also like, hmm, uh, let's, uh, those ships we've got all parked offshore, let's use them if this goes badly. Keep the motor <laughs> running. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to Indiana Jones. Start the plane! Um... So yeah, they they say okay, let's do this one on one fight, and uh, yeah, this fight's have any awesome. snark here. Yeah, it really is. And Brocktree, despite the fact that he's full of blood wrath, actually has some pretty tactical smarts here. To the point that he uh, he gets uh, when he gets hit with that net, he ends up taking it from Trun and uses it against him. Yep. Tron, we're told, fights with a big trident and a net with weights. Yes. And when this starts off, it's kind of a... It's actually, like I said, really good fight. Brocktree is certainly holding his own with this massive sword, and Tron has this excellently made trident... Oh, oh, it it broke. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. And... Brocktree takes an arrow to the shoulder and is like, is that a bee? <laughs> yeah. I thought it was funny, yeah. too. I was like, he cheated. He wasn't supposed to move. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Isn't like that what people who play online shooters always say? Darn it, why'd yeah. you move? Well, <laughs> or it's, well, le- yeah, well, at least he didn't insult, uh, insult him like people who play online shooters. Oh, God. <laughs> 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 There's I mean, far less racism going on here. <laughs> yeah. uh, when uh, Dumai tries to line up a second shot, but oops! oops. Huh. <laughs> See, he didn't count There's on Ruff. He didn't count on Ruff uh, being a gold medal at the javelin toss. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's a javelin there. Huh. Where did he, that come from? He Where is suddenly go? super dead. <laughs> yeah. I like the way it had it, though, where it said, like, he turns to Rip Fang so Rip Fang can see the javelin sticking out of his neck. <laughs> where did this come from? <laughs> <laughs> and admittedly, Rip Fang, even though the two of them have been fighting this entire book, as brothers tend to do, um, he, he actually, there, I, th- I've, I would think there's a moment of, uh, like, oh, oh, that was my brother. Yeah. I should have a moment of silence for him. Okay, time to go. Yep. <laughs> yep, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck with it. It's like, let's see. My brother's dead. Ba- it sounds like, yep, boss just had his spine snapped. All right, I'm getting the heck out of here. <laughs> yes. And we, um. we then get a moment, um, as we find out that earlier Bucko wants to really, really hurt Kangaroo. Yeah. And as Kangaroo is escaping and insulting Rip Fang, which, to show everybody in this book, every villain in this book is out to backstab each other, and Rip Fang's like, well, hey, look, there's someone following us. And he's like, where? Oh, here, go say hi to him. And he throws him off the edge of the ship. Yeah. <laughs> and admittedly, Bucko gets a little blood wrathy here. Yeah, this is a chilling moment. Yes. Oh, God, yeah. I mean, I think he's pretty justified, though. I mean, if my whole family was destroyed by this person, I might not be too happy either. Yeah. Oh, we can tell he's going to enjoy it perversely. Oh, yes. yeah. Having, uh, the, having this Corsair at his disposal. And we never find out what he does to him. No. Nope. I, I do Cut like how they, I do like how they <laughs> leave it, though. Where he's like, tell me, my friend, how does it feel to be without your great horde of vermin to help you out? And then he beats him and goes, tell me! And that's the end of the scene. Like, oh, okay. Oh, oh, how did you write it down here? 
Oh no no no! That's well, that's the other Vermin oh, Revenge. Yeah, yeah, we'll get to that. I, I, <laughs> uh, the heroes are essentially like, oh, we had a pretty well bloodless victory, and someone's like, "What about Fleet Scott?" And they're like, "What about Fleet Scott?" Oh, that's <laughs> out. But let's talk about the main fight because yes, you mentioned there was a spine snapping, but let's talk about how that happened. Oh, but then Rip Fang so, sails off, and is, we're never going to see him again, probably. Nah, I, I mean, I can't. I, we probably won't. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, Brock Tree not only wins the fight, he manages to toss both of Tron's major weapons away or disable them, and he basically picks him up by the skr- by the shirt and gives him a nice big hug. Aww. <laughs> oh, Tree, Mike, hug. Stop Aww. hugging! Stop hugging! <laughs> <laughs> I need you to hold Ungatron as tightly as you can. It's how I show affection. <laughs> Stop hugging! <laughs> and... Tron? Yeah, up. <laughs> you can, like, hear the cracking of his spine as he's shaking. I'm like, oh, Tron go night-night. <laughs> yeah, and Dark Tree throws him aside and basically tells the remaining vermin who didn't run away... <laughs> Far, far away. <laughs> uh, Sail away. I'm not going to kill you, but you need to uh, go go throw your leader into the sea. He'll, he'll the sea will take care of it. <laughs> yeah. And I'm sure I'm sure that that that's totally going to be into this. Yeah. Yep. Oh wait. No. Huh. Then. Uh, hey. This is that, part. Uh, is that Grottel? Yeah. Oh, this part went around. Dark too. <laughs> Where he washes up on shore and then slowly realizes he's being slowly taken back out to sea and starts panicking. And then all of a sudden, Grottle shows back up. And he's like, oh, Grottle will help me. What you, Grottle, what are you doing? And Grottle just, <laughs> I, I can just hear Grottle going, oh, Ungat, my dear old friend. Did you know the <laughs> famous fox proverb that revenge is a dish best served cold? It is very cold at sea. <laughs> Grottle! <laughs> Buried alive. Uh, well, no, not in this case. But, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Drowning alive. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it, Jeremy and I are huge Star Trek fans. Um, <laughs> totally worth it. Uh, so, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, so fight's over. Brock Tree's got his mountain back, and everybody's happy, and especially Bucko, who you don't know what he's doing. And we never will find out. <laughs> nope. <laughs> like, I'm leaving now. <laughs> but uh, I do want to point out, Brock Tree's like, oh, after Ruro fixes him up, he's like, yeah, I don't feel anything. This wine you ever gave me is kind of good. It's <laughs> in here. <laughs> Huh, Sister May's uh, oxycodone. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I just like the part where the ba- his the bandage on his head falls over his eyes. He's like, "All right, lights out, everyone, go to bed." <laughs> yeah, if he is, if he is literally, if there is poppy seed in that, uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Brock Tree, that would exactly be what his reaction is like. You, He's giddy now. Long story short, long story short, I had a kidney stone years ago, and they put me on those happy drugs, and that stuff just makes you very happy. So, <laughs> yeah. and a little loopy, and yeah. <laughs> so yeah, Brock Tree is a, he, he's in a good mood. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, the book breaks up, and we find out basically all most of the tribes are going their separate ways. Yep. There's one last feast at Salman's Tron, and everybody's happy, and Skipper of Sea Otters gets to sail on his own fleet. Yay! And Yay! Rough goes with yes. Bucko's like, eh, I'm gonna head back north to the mountains. I've gotten my revenge. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> and Dottie just cannot stop crying, which I under like. Because I've been, you know, this super emotional moment, you know, especially after a huge thing like a battle or whatever, you just, your emotions are all over the place. And you just cry all the time. Yep. And Juka's tribe, without her, is going back to their pine grove. Yep. And Ruro is the leader. Mm-hmm. 
but they all promise to visit each other. So, but Dottie and the remaining hares who have decided to stick around, they're like, hmm, maybe we should re restock the mountain and continue to live here. Yes, clean up and, all that vermin stench can, that's probably hanging around. <laughs> <laughs> we'll set up a patrol that goes on very long, a sort of a big patrol. Hmm. I'll figure out the right name for it. No, 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 no. The, that's not the right word. <laughs> the the hair brigade? No, that's not right either. No, 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 no. Hmm, this is tough. Yeah. yeah. We need something iconic, but I, yeah. I don't know. Some kind of long patrol. Nah, that would... Nah, nah, that's it. No, yeah. no. <laughs> a little catchy, but I don't know. It doesn't sound right. Almost, I mean... I don't even think you could make a book out of that title. No, probably not. <laughs> no. And the book ends with we're we're back to all the way back into the far future with Russ and his wife and their kids, and it's all cute. Yeah. It is cute. Yeah. We have Snowstripe who fell asleep listening to the story, and Dad puts him to bed. Yep. Aww. Uh, it, it was this moment, actually. It was, I remember we discussed this before about how they were using the term Dibbon, even though it mm -hmm. takes place way before Redwall existing and things like that. Yes. Yeah. I, I My theory for like the in-universe explanation is Rusino was the one who wrote and read the story, so it would make sense for him to use current terms that people would understand. Oh, that makes sense. I like that. Mm, I'll go with that. So... But I'm sure we'll never see another Green Eyes again. No. Nope. nope. Or yeah. Rib Thing. Nope. Or a possible descendant of Rib Thing. So. <laughs> or any other cats. I mean, never. Oh, never, wait. You already saw, we already saw one in Red Ball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oops. Where have you been? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is well. I do want to point out... So, that's the plain plot. Yay. But... We get some nice some series lore. There's no more riddle poems for this book, but there is definitely an interesting note of Badger Law. So, we were told what, in book two what the hair law was, about we always follow badgers, because that can't be abused. But Badger Law, for their growth guarding their own species, is, and I'm quoting here, defend the weak, protect both young and old, never desert your friends. Give justice to all, be fearless in battle, and always be right to defend the right. And the Badger Lord Sal Minstrom must always sh show a welcome and good cheer to all of true heart who visit here in peace. Our gates will ever be open to them. For this is the word of the Badger law Lord and law of Sal Minstrom practice to us down from Lord Brock Tree. Hmm. Funny. I don't think how that's Earth Stripe tends to act <laughs> come uh, Sal Minstrom. <laughs> he's not a big thing, he's not big on guests. But we'll get to that in time. <laughs> it's interesting seeing this this very early series lore since his first chronol chrono yeah. Early book. Chronologically, that's the word. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of um etymology that becomes apparent as the series goes on, like they have certain phrases that they use and certain vocabulary that they use more often. Mm-hmm. So, that just leaves what comes in the future, and we have a weird divergence here. Yeah. Because normally, Jake's likes to make every book a self-contained story, even when they're direct sequels. But, if we actually go in strict chronological order here, the next story is from The Legend of Book Book 2. Yes. Where we... So. It's a little out of order, but hey, that seems like the next spot. Yep, that makes sense. So, you you want to do Book 2 of Legend of Luke? Yep. Yeah. That sounds good. And then... I'm sure when we have swing around for it again, when in proper order, we'll have to mention that. Yes. Yes. 
And because otherwise, it's like we'll get to the end of book one of it. It's like, all right, they're going to tell us this epic story, and then the next episode, it's man, that was a great story they told. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're going to have to do that. Make that joke. You know I that, right? What happened? I think you skipped an episode. <laughs> <laughs> Any final thoughts on this one? What did you think? Good? Bad? I liked her reunion with Aunt Blanche. I don't know if we went into that. We didn't really, no. I, I kind of liked it. It was cute. And then all the other people were like, oh, I love your shawl. Like the the little, <laughs> around the hem, there's this really neat design. And it's like mud. <laughs> and that just yeah. made me laugh. Yeah, Daddy, uh, Daddy finally meets the... Mi- the aunt she was supposed to send there in the first place. He was supposed to beat her and put her into the right path. <laughs> oh, no, wait. Oh, that letter was lost. We don't know that anymore. <laughs> Conveniently, yes. Oh, no. And uh, oh. as far as me, and then, like I said, I've said it previously, this is about where I started to age out of the series, if that's the right word. Because... I didn't remember a thing about this book before I started reading it again, other than the literally the bookends of Rosno. Mm. Yeah, that was all you As remembered it. Pretty much. Mm-hmm. I mean, I like the book. It's definitely a uh, different against against the normal. There's no red wall, so that's kind of nice for a change. Yeah. So, and it definitely sets the stage for. Elements that are already established and one elements that to come. And may. Yeah. I I like this one. Um, this was not where I like where I started to fall off the series. That it still was a few more. I still went through a few more books after this one. Um, I I remember when it came out. I was really happy to read it. But I'm like, oh cool, it's this you know prequel before everything, and it was cool to see, you know, how Salaman, you know, how the Long Patrol was established. All, like, basically, you know, the start of everything. And also, there's no Martin in this one. It's... Yeah. It, it feels very different. It feels different from a lot of the others. It does. And, you know, I was the nerd who was still reading these books in college, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I mean, that's why we're still nerds and we still want to come back to it. So. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, I, I read these into college also. So. Now, before I forget, I also want to mention a couple things. First, Katie, thank you and darn you for getting me addicted to Sears' song. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, she, after we recorded the last one, she sent out an email with this Celtic band. Celtic? Is that the right word? You know, I'm not sure. I found it on the um, Facebook group for Redwall. Oh, that's another thing I need to advertise on. Moving on. Yes, um, you should do that. <laughs> I mean, I did. I was like, hey, I'm on a podcast. Come listen to it. But that's all, that's, that's all I did. Oh, I appreciate that. <laughs> They're a Celtic folk rock band from Columbia, South, uh, South Carolina? Really? really? <laughs> I thought that was... Oh, okay, they're stateside. For some reason, I thought I was reading that as Canadian. But yeah, they have a track called Eulalia, which is pretty awesome. Go listen to it. It's free on YouTube. And if you're like me and like want to support a good indie band, buy it. We fully yeah. endorse that. What else? Oh, on Reddit, our Reddit's subreddit for Redwall stuff, Eulalia, there is a current food contest. Enter! Because we are going to invite the winners back on for the next food episode. Yeah. And right now they only have, like, one person who turned in anything. Oh. So. And I'm looking forward to the next food episode, too. And hopefully when I prepare the dish for that one, I won't cut one of my fingers open. Yeah, don't do that. Hopefully yeah. my Skype will oh, work and I'll be able to join that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, the the blood uh, just adds the flavor, right? <laughs> sure. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So next time, folks, we're going to do, uh, like we said, Legend Book Book 2. Jeremy, where can they find us on the internet? You can find us at recorderonthewall.com. We, as Pete mentioned, we have a red, we are on the Eulalia subreddit for Redwall. We the podcast is also is available on iTunes, on Google Play Podcast, and we have a mention in the official Redwall forums. Okay, thanks for being on. We'll see you in about two weeks for the next episode. Awesome. <laughs>